Did anyone else sniff today's garbage? And I thought yesterday's garbage smelled good. How's it going guys? My name is Cyrus the Owl City Fanboy and today we are back at discussing the best cartoon of all time, Miraculous Lady Slag. Before we start, I need to get two things out of the way. Number one, this stupid looking thing. <coughs> Number two, season quattro recap. From the first episode to the last one, it's a catastrophe. Good things. I like Mega Leech, Guild Trip, Crocodile, Gang of Secrets, and all the single ladies. Bad things. Everything else. Plus, Marisu's panic attack in the finale. I'm not ashamed to admit that Marisu's panic attack is disappointing garbage. Everything that happened before it made no sense at all. Garbage buildup equals garbage outcome. I wanted to feel bad for Marisu for the first time in forever. But if I do that, I'll look like a teacher who loves giving A pluses to lazy students. I mustn't do it. It'll violate my standards. The awful writing forced Mari Sue's panic attack so much, she ended up becoming a Mary Sue. Oh, please feel bad for me, my dear audience. Please, I'm having a panic attack. Dude, I have no idea what just happened, so how can I feel bad for you when the I don't care. I'm having a panic attack, and that's all that matters, so please feel bad for me. Please. <sighs> That's what Mary Sue's are all about. The writers desperately convincing the audience that they should feel some certain emotions for their characters, but failing in the process. Mary Sue. Mari Sue. Marinette Sue Pan Chang. It sounds to me that you've never experienced a panic attack before, Cyrus. No wonder you won't sympathize for Marinette, you heartless bastard. Ugh, I hate this argument so much. So just because I've never experienced what the character is experiencing, that explains why I don't feel bad for the character? I was never treated like a lab rat when I was young and yet I feel bad for Homelander how do you explain that huh how do you explain let allow me to explain it for you Homelander has good writing Mari Sue and this stupid show does it Simple as that. But Marisu's panic attack isn't the worst thing about season 4. The biggest turnoff in season 4 for me is the oh-so-sympathetic sunshine boy Adrian. But Cyrus, I thought you hate the Rooster Miraculous the most. We'll get to that later. Some people actually think that it's a good thing that he's selfish, immature, and incredibly simpy for Ladybug. We should be happy that Adrian is like that, Cyrus. It makes him so human. Adrian Agrest is human. I agree, Adrian does feel like a human being. Selfishness is a natural human trait, but where are the consequences? Selfishness is human, but it's bad, right? Not giving him consequences for it is downright unforgivable. Unless if it's meant to be a joke. Is this a joke? I don't think so. If characters do something bad or good, they must suffer the consequences so that the plot will move forward while keeping your audience interested. Oh my god, he did something that caused a certain thing. I want to know more. What the hell is going to happen next? Also, giving consequences is one of the best ways ever to showcase the moral of your story. It's okay if there's no moral, as long as there's something or anything to get invested in, like stakes. If there are no consequences, then there are no stakes. And if there are no stakes, then nothing matters. And if nothing matters, then there's nothing to be invested in. It's terrible storytelling 101. That's how this made me feel. The ending of Strike Back is not earned, and you know it, don't you? You know that this is not earned. Watching this wanker receiving what he has begged for for being selfish and stupid, not for working hard to deserve it, made me think that nothing mattered. Nothing mattered. You can ignore a large chunk of season 4, skip to the final scene of Strike Back, and nothing will change. It'll still feel unearned. It took me out of the story, and you've essentially wasted my time and it destroyed my hopes for Adrian in the future. Therefore, he is garbage. But he's human! Just because a character is human, that doesn't automatically mean it's good writing. There are more things you need to do than merely humanizing your character, including giving them consequences. That is also not enough for good character writing. There needs to be a lot more than these two. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. I'm curious to know if there's anyone, anyone at all, that feels the same way about this crap. Why aren't you guys mad about this? Why am I the only one that's pissed? Well, I guess I need to be happy about that. Being different is the greatest thing in the whole wide world. If their goal was to damage Adrian's reputation, they did a great job. I hate you, Adrian. What burns me the most is that I used to defend you with a burning passion, and you betray me like how Auntie Helen betrayed Uncle Roger? Shame on you, Adrian. Shame on you. Now let us get to season 5. One thing to note is that this season is different from seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4. Not only because it's the worst goddamn season by far, but also because of the episode titles. They're not villain names, but fancy words. Determination, jubilation, elation, evolution, transmission, etc. All I can say is, congratulations, Miraculous. You've officially gone to the path of naming your episodes Madness Combat Style. 
style. Remember Madness Combat? That legendary cartoon series is filled with fancy titled episodes. Apotheosis, Antipathy, Consternation, Aggregation, Abrogation, Expurgation, you name it. MLB can never, ever, ever be compared to the masterpiece known as Madness Combat, but the way they named the episodes in Season 5 is Madness Combat-esque. Anyway, did this season improve from the fourth? Did this season improve Adrian, Marisu, and everything else? Well, well just, just look, look at my, my face. face. Evolution. The intro theme song is now mixed with an electric guitar. I have to admit, it sounds good. It's like the intro is telling me that what I'm about to watch is something so awesome! The episode picks up right where we left off from Strike Back. All of the Kwamis got captured by... What's his name? Um, Monarch? From Hawk Moth to Shadow Moth to Monarch. If Gabby evolves again, will his name be Shadow Monarch or Dictatorship or Tyranny or Communism or Democracy? It will depend on his concept. Thank you, Katamar. It's you and me. <sighs> the more I replay this part, the more I imagine myself doing this to Adrian. <laughs> Gabby plans to use the Rabbit Miraculous to travel back in time, to get the Ladybug and Black Hat Miraculouses at times when they were at their weakest or whatever. He transforms into Monarch. Oh man, oh, this... <laughs> Ladybug's default costume design is too less, this is too much. We have two worst costumes ever at the same time. Monarch goes back to the season 1 episode Lady Wi-Fi. The Three Stooges caught him purple-handed. Seriously, is that his skin color or is it part of the suit? Is that even purple or violet? I don't know, I'm, I'm colorblind. And we're gonna take back the miraculous you stole from us right here and now! Okay, do it. Do it. Do it now. You got him right there. He's right there. He's right there. There! He's all tied up! He can't fight back! He, he's defenseless! And there's three of you! So do it! Do it! Do it! Take all of his Miraculouses, or at least three or four of them! Do it! Do, do it! it! If you're afraid that he might fight back and escape, then knock him out cold, kick him in the face, or, or Cat Noir, use your staff to put him to sleep, hit him in the face, do anything! Do anything to get all of the jewels now! Instead of talking and explaining how you caught him or how the portal works, nobody gives a rat's ass, Tornado! Take all of the Miraculouses now! Now! Just do it! I better calm down, because this is only the beginning. Why are you guys just standing there? Can't you see what's going on right now? Get off your fat asses and help Ladybug, you goddamn sons! Monarch was able to escape and paralyze Tornado. Ladybug and Cat Noir captured him again. Okay, do, do, it, it, do it, it now, do it, it now! Get all of his miraculouses! Oh no, it's too late. <sighs> I want to strangle you. Ladybug decided to trust Cat Noir and give him the Rabbit Miraculous, transforming into Rabbit Noir. I would have preferred the Black Bunny. His costume design is okie dokie artichoke. I hated this at first. I mean, look at the ears. They're way too big. I get that he's rabbit themed, but, but they're too big. I think it takes some getting used to. Something that cannot be said about this. I got used to this recently and I don't hate it anymore. It's still not good, as well as the costume itself. 6 out of 10. It's okay. I have mixed feelings about this decision. On one hand, I like how they are working properly now. This guy is not crying for attention. Ladybug finally trusts Cat Noir as a partner. I appreciate all of this, but on the other hand, it doesn't feel earned. As I said before, Cat Noir got what he wanted all for doing nothing to deserve it. I'm not saying he should be punished by Ladybug right now at a dangerous time like this. I'm saying this feels out of nowhere because it's unearned. It sucks. Anyway, they just keep on chasing Monarch. Look at the way Nino kissed Alia between the ears. He had his eyes open. Eventually, Monarch gets tired after using so many Miraculouses at once. Didn't you know using too many Miraculous at once is dangerous? Damn straight! I mean, it's not exactly true. You can use multiple Miraculouses without getting dizzy. If you use the Mouse Miraculous to multiply and then tell your clones to use the rest of the Miraculouses, that leads me to the elephant question for Gabby. Dear Gabriel, tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why you didn't bother to, uh, I don't know, plan your strategy? Plan your strategy of getting the Ladybug and Black Hat Miraculouses before going back in time. Do you have any idea of the infinite amount of genius plans you could come up with if you bothered to think? Speaking of thinking, this is the third time in a row where Ladybug and Cat Noir have a good chance to get what they came here for. And it's the best chance. He's knocked out. He can't defend himself at all. So do it, ladies. Do, do it! it. Do it! Get all of them now! Especially the rabbit and the dog miraculous! Do, do it. it! Do it! Stop poking and do, do it. it! Get all of them now! What, what are, are you waiting, waiting for? for? Unfortunately, these Muppets decided to take the rabbit miraculous and nothing else. What's even worse is that they took it slower than your own internet connection. They got distracted by what's going on and Monarch escapes with a rabbit miraculous after fetching it. You had him, right?
<laughs> Ladybug uses her lucky charm. Meanwhile, Monarch goes to a season 2 episode where these wankers are clumsy. I think it's reverser. Gabby goes back to ask Natalie for food. Elsewhere, Ladybug and Cat Noir call someone for help. Hey! I thought I thought I buried you! He instantly accepted that they are miraculous holders and friends from the future without thinking that they might be, uh, normal teenagers pulling a prank on you. It would be absolutely surreal if that did happen to him. What are your names? Mommy. Daddy. I believe you. Not to mention, this twat accepting who they are claimed to be in an instant is yet another one of the many timeline inconsistencies of Miraculous Ladybug. In the episode Backwarder, the opening established that Master Bait is way too paranoid to use these Miraculouses at dangerous times like that. But in this episode, the same Pratt who said the same thing in the same exact timeline is now okay with casually giving away whatever Miraculouses strangers desire. If he was so goddamn paranoid here, why is he cool seconds later? Tell me why! Tell me Tell me the truth. Is he or is he not psychic? Tornado finally faces her destiny. Before that, she uses the dog miraculous. She transforms into canine girl. Canine girl? Are you kidding me? Canine girl? You might as well call her female dog. You know what else is a terminology for female dog? Seriously, do you know? Her costume is pretty good. I like the patterns, the beret looks awesome, the color schemes mix very well, and it's honestly better than Velma. Sadly, this is goodbye for her, since she needs to protect the Rabbit Miraculous. They go back to the time where the two Stooges screwed up for the third time in a row, and told Tornado to fetch the Rabbit Miraculous before Monarch does. Female Dog and the two Stooges go back to the Season 2 finale, after leaving the Lucky Charm in the Burrow to plan a trap for Monarch. Okay. Natalie gives Gabby the most stupidly obvious idea. Give the tutorial on how to fix the magic jewels to his past self before he goes inside Emily. Are you sure you're ready? Yes. For the first time ever, Emily has spoken canonically in the show, and I, for one, do not care. Passcode likes to say, don't put limitations to yourself. I love this song, but I disagree. I like having limitations. On my patience. It seems... Healthy. Gabriel doesn't decide to go along with the plan as he got distracted by this thing. He's conflicted on whether to save his wife or do something else. What the hell are you doing, dude? Going after Ladybug and Cat Noir? What's the point? You want to save your wife, right? This is your motivation since day one, right? Her absence is the cause of your heinous actions, right? You're right there. You're right there, you donut. Do, do it. it. Do, do it. it. Do, do it. it. Yes, you can. <sighs> <sighs> Hey, hey, calm down, Cyrus. Hear me out. It does make sense for him to do that. If you recall Dearest Family, he doesn't want to save his wife only. He wants to destroy the world and rebuild it with the Ladybug and Black Cat Miraculous. Also, defeating Ladybug and Cat Noir eventually became his goal. He's been fighting them for a very long time. That he gradually developed a personal grudge with them. That's why he didn't save his wife. That's why he got distracted by this. That's why he couldn't achieve his goal. Defeating Ladybug and Cat Noir is now his new goal. Oh yeah, you're right. That does make sense. That makes total sense. You wanna know what else makes total sense? SHOVING TURKEYS UP YOUR ASS! There is no reason for him not to do this! No reason that makes rational sense! No reason! You can't tell me otherwise! You can't! Oh, but Ladybug and Cat Noir might ruin his future since they're in that timeline. How can they ruin his future when it'll be too late for them to ruin it if he gave the USB to his past self so history will be rewritten before they do anything there? <laughs> oh, but he wants the Ladybug and Black Hat Miraculouses to wish for a perfect world for him and Emily, which is something he can get by giving the USB to his past self. History will be rewritten. The world will be rewritten. Oh, but defeating Ladybug and Cat Noir became his primary goal after all these months of fighting them. I find that to be massively bollocks beyond belief. Throughout the entire show, he grieved for Emily endlessly and wants her to return. The motivation flip is the definition of out of nowhere. It's pure bollocks. So go save your wife so the show will end. Oh, that's why. That's why he couldn't do it. Because the show will end. <sighs> The dumbasses who came up with this idea of a climax have all the intelligence of a cardboard box? Did Nino write this climax? It is one of the most embarrassing and idiotic climaxes to ever be written in TV history. Let's take a look at Avengers Infinity War. The Guardians and the Avengers plan a trap for Thanos. It was successful. However, the tables turned after Peter learned that Thanos dropped Gamora. Victory was about to be achieved for the heroes, but Peter's uncontrollable but believable, believable, believable rage caused him to beat up Thanos, 
resulting a defeat. Thanos escapes and got back on his feet. This is an example of a thrilling climax. The writers of this film successfully got the viewers thrilled, as we want to know what's gonna happen next, because all that happened here are intelligible for the story and characters. It all makes perfect sense. But this? <laughs> Now if you're gonna say, you don't understand it Cyrus, that's the problem, go ahead, you can use that argument all you want, but the mere fact that I and a lot of people misunderstood this proves that the writers did a terrible job at executing their ideas and they utterly failed to make this climax good. Sometimes it is the audience's fault for not understanding, mostly due to ignorance or not enough careful viewing. But I did my best here. I've watched this more than one time, I revisited the premature seasons and yet I can't seem to understand this at the end of the day. I'm fine if something is nonsense, as long as it's meant to be interpretive, like inside. That game contains 0% sense. It's not trying to make sense. The players are the ones to give sense to it. It is a video game that is open to interpretation. Miraculous Ladybug is a different story. It's a cartoon that tries to make sense. This climax, this episode, and the whole show being illogical is a bad thing. If they want me to feel emotions, if they want me to feel thrilled, they need to make sense. But they don't. Therefore, this is bad. Okay? The best theory I can come up with is using so many miraculouses at once has made Gabriel insane, like Dr. Otto Octavius with the tentacles on his spine. Monarch goes to the timeline where they are in, and female dog fetch the rabbit miraculous. She unifies into... I don't think they gave her a name, and jumps to the borough. Ladybug fixes everything. Tornado faces her destiny and transforms into Tornado. Honestly, her teenage design is better than her adult design. She gives the dog miraculous back to Master Bait. Tornado brings Monarch back to the future, and for the final time, thank God it's the final time, he gets captured by the two students. Right on time for yet another defeat, Monarch. And right on time for yet another screw up by the two of you. <laughs> Racist. We were able to get one of the miraculous back from him. But at what price? At what price? At what price? You were able to cripple Monarch by snatching the Rabbit Miraculous from him. One of the most powerful Miraculouses ever. You gave it to one of your classmates so she can protect it and fulfill her destiny. And you're telling me, at what price? At what price? At what price? Hello? Hello? Anybody home? Oh. Gabby cries like Miss Jackson's daughter and asks Emily for forgiveness. Emily, my love. Can you ever forgive me? Oh, you do want to save your wife. So... Why didn't you do it? Tell me why! Tell me why. Natalie told Gabby how stupid he is and decides to not help him anymore. I can appreciate characters screwing up multiple times and acknowledging or getting called out that they screwed up multiple times. But if the screw-ups themselves are invalid and it's done to death in one episode, it makes me want to shove a glitter tube up my ass. Before the episode ends, we see Lila. Oh yeah! Remember? Remember uh, Remember the season 4 finale? Remember what happened during the final scene? Natalie became sick and, and Lila did an evil smile hinting that she might be planning something sinister something exciting to watch so, so what did she do you want to know what she did you you want to know what Natalie is everything okay yes help me get back to my seat Lila <laughs> I can't I can't with this show it's so funny <laughs> yeah but double do <laughs> I can't afford breaking more things. Gabby cries like Miss Jackson's daughter and the episode ends. Evolution is the plot holiest episode I have ever seen in my life. It's an episode with too many plot holes. A tiny bit too much. Tiny bit too much. Just like this. The same thing kept on happening as the episode goes on. Ladybug and Cat Noir capturing Monarch. Monarch escaping. And this guy reassuring Ladybug that everything's gonna be fine. He'll de-transform at some point. We'll get them all back, my woman. Shut the hell up! And be real for a second, dumbass! The reality is, you're a dodgy blighter who didn't even try, who didn't even try to make your hypothetical statements reality! I know you're trying to cheer her up, but would you shut the f up? How many times have they messed up in this episode? Mmm... Four times? Four times? Four times? Four times?
It felt like a million times because it kept on happening again and again and again without anything changing. That is the definition of insanity. The same thing happening again and again and again and again and again. To perfectly summarize evolution, allow me to play my favorite Bring Me The Horizon song. On the contrary, we did go somewhere regarding Tornado. Her story is interesting, but it could be more interesting if we got a chance to focus on her more. Putting her aside, evolution is undoubtedly a mess. They try to establish how Monarch is menacing, but really the only reason why he's menacing is not because his brain is bigger than his own pencil, but because he has plot armor. So much plot armor! I seriously had no idea what they were thinking. Without a doubt, Evolution is one of the worst episodes, if not the absolute worst episode of Miraculous. Worse than Penalty, I'll explain later. And so far, Evolution is the worst of season 5. This is not recency bias, I assure you. I've watched this more than 10 times. I wanted to give this episode a chance by re-watching it. I thought to myself, maybe re-watching it will change my opinion? That has happened to me quite often. I used to think Gang of Secrets sucks until I watched it again. But this, the more I watch it, the more I hate it. I, I just can't do it anymore. It, it doesn't get better. I gotta stop right now. I am this close. I am this, this close to committing myself voluntarily. Evolution is really, really bad. I hate this episode more than I hate myself. I'm giving it a 0 0.3 out of 10. Phillips head screwdriver. First episode of season 5 is a 0 0.3 out of 10. The first episode! Not to mention, I already consider this the worst of season 5, and the show by far. And it's only the first episode! <laughs> That's definitely a sign that says, this season is gonna be great! Multiplication. Grandmaster Suhan returns. Only now. As far as my knowledge goes, he appeared three times in total in season four. One major, one minor, and one cameo. From his debut episode, the way he lectured Ladybug, and the way he dissed on Master Bait, I had high hopes for this guy. Maybe Ladybug will be trained to be a guardian the real way, or maybe he'll teach them how to do this so that she and Cat Noir will never be akumatized again? You know? But the writers have no idea on what to do with this character. Even though he has potential, even though he could have contributed a lot, no, they threw him away. They threw him away after his first episode, and again in his second episode, and again in this episode. In less than four minutes. I think it's four minutes. After Suhan says that he'll call for backup from the temple. Not only that, they gave him an awful elucidation on why he's been off screen the whole season. It's because of the modern world and all that sh**. I'm proud he knows that he has done wrong, but what I'm not proud of is how fast he did it. He apologized way too quickly, and he left way too quickly. It's as if they needed Su Han to get out of the way like he's nothing important. He's nothing but a mere obstacle. This, my friends, is a perfect example of a throwaway character. I have officially lost all respect for Su Han. Still better than this chav. These guys are out to find Felix. They talk to his super hot mother, but all she said was, he mysteriously disappeared. So they take a break. Adrian quits being a model after talking to Mari Su's ghost. Mari Sue got killed? Nice. Gabby says yes, for some reason. Mari Sue and Alia talk about everything that happened. However, the conversation slowly turns into Adrianette. I get that she's making her feel better, but what she's doing is not good. Let's say hypothetically, your friend is stressed out that she's gonna clean the house all day long. Cheering her up is beneficial, because her situation is not that serious. At least compared to Mari Sue's stakes, she's literally talking about the overall safety of Paris, or possibly humanity itself. Felix ruined everything. Gabriel is so much stronger than ever. Alia changing the subject into something irrelevant doesn't make her sound like a good friend. It makes her sound like... A butthole. A butthole. A butthole. That's not even the worst part. Listen to this. Need I remind you you've tried to not be in love with him before? Ah, yes! I distinctly remember the times when she tried to stop loving Adrian. In the NYC special, Marisu was moving on from Adrian, but you and your stupid ass boyfriend teamed up to get them together, which made Marisu change her mind in the end. In Mr. Pigeon 72, she tried to move on again, but your teensy tiny brain convinced you that she should consult Adrian after Kagami broke up with him. Yes, she has tried to move on from Adrian, but she failed to do so because of you! You goddamn HIPPOCRITE! Hello? Did I remind you you've tried to not be in love with him before? And if only it could help Marinette be more honest with herself and clear about her feelings. Operation New York! So, what happened on the plane with your friend Adrian? Paris is safe from Supervillain! Between friends! What? Are you out of your mind? You said he was just waiting for you to tell him to stay? It doesn't matter what I expected you to do. Who's Adrian to you? There will never be a better time to be clear with yourself, Marinette. Do you want to leave or do you want to stay? Hang on, don't you mean 
up to go and consult the house and three kids and a hamster name whatever and all that. Does that ring a bell? Mind you, you might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. You might not be in love with him before. And you know what else? Marisu herself said that her love for Adrian led her to mistaking Felix as him, resulting in a massive disaster. It hasn't even been a day since that happened. Yet Alia tells Marisu that she and Adrian are meant to be, and that they should be together. Tell me why! Tell me why! What happened to you, Alia? What happened to you? Huh? Oh yeah, you devoted yourself to a dumbass. Adrian talks to Marisu about how Marisu has been a huge help for him since the first day of school, and that she has given him good advice. Mostly false. She has helped Adrian, but not that much. Not enough to consider Marisu his guardian angel. But it is enough to consider her as Adrian's classmate. Ergo, I don't know what the hell this dude is talking about. The next day, Tornado's secret identity was revealed. What are the consequences of that? I don't think Monarch or any supervillain can catch her. Now that she's not here. Unless if there's a certain supervillain that can travel through the borough. It shouldn't be a child's duty to fight Monarch. It shouldn't be a child's duty to fight Monarch. Adrian tries to kiss Marisu repeatedly repeatedly while she kept on avoiding. Adrian, I know you never had a good family to teach you these things, but you should have known after the first time that kissing her is wrong. So stop. Okay? Oh, of course, Alia wants it to happen! It kinda goes in returns, but there's a twist. She can now multiply after Monarch gave her an upgrade, using the Mas Miraculous. This is how it's gonna be from now on. Akumatized victims with Kwame power-ups. Genius idea. I can't believe I said that. I better wash my hands after I'm done with this. After defeating Ikari dozen, heh. <laughs> Ladybug gives her a magical charm. Tsurugi-san. The prototype works perfectly. Oh, really? They're not working together? Whoa, I'm so shocked, man. I am shocked. This is so surprising. Man, I tell you what, man. I'm talking about Daniel Kagami's mom, man. And working with that Daniel Gabriel Aggressive Jew, too, man. I tell you what, man. I'm talking about the legitimate Jew, man. It's like that Daniel time when I work with that man, man. You're just too, too, man. Happened to me. The next scene, we see a commercial of the Alexa ripoff. And that's why he allowed Adrian to quit being a model. Simply because there's no need. But there is more to this product. The epilogue shows that Felix was hiding all this time with the Peak up Miraculous. All in all, this episode sucks. I enjoyed this montage, showcasing the people of Paris staying positive. I like the battle between the two Stooges and Ikari Dozen. What I don't like is Grandmaster Suhan and Alia. She's an awful friend. Dude, I'm about to get fired if I don't do better. I need help. Will you help me? Yes. By the way, how's your uh, love life going? Uh, how's your... How's, have you seen this movie? Have you seen that game? Have you played this game? Or have you seen that woman over there? Is that the kind of friend you would want to have in real life? I'd rather be friends with a pencil sharpener. At least a pencil sharpener knows what I'm going through and helps me with it by sharpening my pencils. Unlike this stupid scrubber. I think Alia deserves her own video someday about how she's not a good friend, but only if she doesn't get better this season until the very end. Either way, she's getting a video. For now, I'm gonna keep my eye on you, Alia. You understand me? I got my eye on you. Three out of 10. I'm coming for you, Alia. It's not what it sounds like. Destruction. The first half of the episode is Marisu executing her plan, and the other half is Marisu explaining her plan to Alia. Before the episode ends, Gabby comes up with a new tactic involving these rings. The end! Now, about the Rooster Miraculous. It finally got a clear description. It's still a powerful Miraculous, but thank God, it's not that powerful to the point where it destroyed the series. It can grant any ability, but it mustn't be an ability that another Kwame has, like time traveling and creation. But I think you can have the ability to revive dead people. Are there any Miraculouses that can do that? I don't think so. Tiki cannot do that. Creation and resurrection are two different things. Do it to Emily. Uh, no, he can't. You can't use the Rooster Miraculous to disrupt another Kwame's magic, and Emily's death or coma was caused by the Peacock's magic. I think. Lastly, it needs to be an ability, not a wish, which I don't get. Define wish. Define ability. The ability to score a point in soccer anytime I shoot sounds like a wish to me, not a super ability. I don't get what he meant by that, but I'm so glad that the rooster isn't as powerful as I thought it would be. I'm willing to admit that I might have overreacted when I first saw the rooster miraculous. Simultaneously, I kinda do understand why I overreacted before. The explanation they gave was so stupid. My ability is to choose a super ability. If you gave me this in the first place, I would have accepted it 
committed in a civil manner. But hey, I can give this a pass. I myself do that as well. I admit and take back my opinions whenever I feel like it. Now that the Rooster Miraculous is fixed, does that mean I appreciate Panoteam? Hell no! It's still a god-awful episode at the end of the day! It's filled with gibberish, retcon, annoyance, and a lot of things I can't remember and I don't want to. I refuse to watch it again. My official score for Panoteam is 1 out of 10. FM Merrill and Evolution are worse. Anyway, now that the Rooster Miraculous is fixed and it is no longer a plot hole, does that mean this show is not a zombie anymore? Meaning it's dead but it keeps on going? Is Miraculous Ladybug not dead anymore? Hell! <laughs> Remember Mr. Pigeon 72? In that episode, it is revealed that Ladybug can create. Does she have any limits? Your only limits are the ones you put on yourself. We never got a follow-up to that. As far as I know, that used to be the biggest plot hole of the show before the rooster. But after this Miraculous got clarified, this is again the biggest plot hole in Miraculous Ladybug. A plot hole that can end everything. She can create whatever she wants like a monarch tracker, an army of robots, an infinite universe. You can do that, right? You have no limits, right? I'm gonna stop calling this show dead if her superpowers will get further elaborated someday. For now, MLB is a zombie. It's dead, but it keeps on going. Now let's get to this scene. They captured Monarch successfully. What did they do next? Did they snatch the Miraculouses from Monarch? Yeah, they did not. Instead, I instead... <laughs> Instead, the two students explained the convoluted plan, like it's important for him to know. So, Cat Noir and I rushed here to replace- Shut the hell up and take the magic jewels, you stupid smelly slag! What's the goddamn point? What's the goddamn point of explaining all of the crap you did? The viewers need to know? They will! Because after this scene, you literally started to explain your plan to Alia! So, explaining it to Monarch and the viewers at this specific time isn't worth it! Take all of them now! Take it! Take them now, please! Please! <sighs> or maybe you can not do it. Besides, how else are we gonna get more episodes? <laughs> Due to Ladybug being too slow and generally stupid down to the bones, Monarch escaped by letting Cat Noir cataclysm his arm. There's a real person behind that mask and I must have hurt him terribly. Oh, now you feel bad for doing something terrible. Let's recap season 4. All you've ever done was feel bad for yourself. Your deluded brain forces you to believe that Ladybug sees you and treats you like nothing, while you are treating everyone and everything like nothing, as well as Ladybug herself. You didn't see her as a person who's going through a lot, but as a trophy you begged for endless except for that one moment in Gang of Secrets. Yet you didn't feel bad for giving her a lot of unfair stress only to yourself, as if you did nothing wrong. Now you have remorse for others. What made you change your ways? Is it because your lady is here with you and no one else? Now that you got what you've begged for, your worries are now shifted to other things, not your selfishness anymore. Or is it because Miraculous Ladybug fixes everything in the end, but not this specifically? Is that it? This makes me want to raise a lot of questions instead of feeling sad for him. Can Adrian remember any of the terrible things he did in season 4 or was he never aware of any of it? Imagine if I were to change my opinions while not mentioning what my opinion used to be before changing it. Like for example, I love Queen Maeve. The next video. I hate Queen Maeve. But Cyrus, you said you love Queen Maeve. I don't know what the hell you talking about mate. How would that make you feel? Confused? That's what I thought. Unless if my videos are meant to be anthological. Miraculous Ladybug is not that. But it feels like it and it's not a good thing. Granted it was Monarch but there's a real person behind that mask and- There is also a real person under this mask! And yet you didn't feel sorry for almost cataclysming her! It might be because he did end up giving Monarch a cataclysm, unlike her. Well before he did do it by accident, he was scared! He was afraid to cataclysm a person! He was afraid to find out what it'll do to him! Where the hell is the remorse here? Why only now does he feel remorseful? Tell me why! Hey! It really feels like season 5 is written and directed by a bunch of people who are not the same people who wrote and directed season 4. Miraculous Ladybug is an anthology series. What's the antonym for immersed in the context of feeling immersed in the story? That's exactly what I'm feeling right now. Don't take this the wrong way. I like his reaction. I've always wanted to see him feel remorse, but the requirements are missing. Consistency and logic are nowhere to be found. After this episode, the cataclysm mark on Gabby's arm gets worse and worse, indicating that he might die. Hmm, I'm assuming I'm supposed to give my sympathy. How was it possible to feel bad for something that was done for shock value, not for making any compelling sense? You tell me, you burk. Why did they not take all of his miraculouses instantly when they had him right there? He might fight back, then knock him out cold with a staff or anything as I said before, you idiot. But Monarch asked them how they did it. That's why she started explaining.
three episodes in, and I'm already tired. To be fair, this is not as frustrating and as ridiculously overdone as Evolution. Nathless, this episode sucks. You guys suck! Three out of ten would watch it again. <laughs> Jubilation. The owl tried to save a cat but falls off. Luckily, he was saved by a ladybug copycat. Is she a good ladybug? When it comes to science, if you're a ladybug and not Mari Sue, you're a good ladybug. Emotional damage! Her name is... So Clean? So Clean? They used to be classmates last year, but no one cares. You can hardly tell the difference between this and the real Adrian. Mari Sue, if you do think that way, get some help. Mari Sue talks about Adrian's personal issues. Yeah, it's a good thing that you're talking about that to a person who Adrian never met. You're such a good friend, Mari Sue. I could just... I could gobble you all up and eat you for dessert. Nobody knows this, but... Yes, nobody knows that. And it should stay that way. Until he himself feels like talking about it, you dumbass. How would you feel if Adrian conversates with people who you never met and suddenly brings up the topic of your creepy obsession over him? Oh, wait. He doesn't need to do that because everyone knows. EMOTIONAL DAMMIT! Mari Sue tells So Fresh and So Clean to stop being Ladybug. Flying dinosaurs run amok, and Ladybug's out to save the day. It's time for the real Ladybug to step in. Yeah, the real Ladybug, who is a fool for not grabbing the Miraculouses when she had the perfect chances! The Alexa ripoff recorded Mari Sue's battle with the flying dinosaurs. Luckily, So Clean believed it was a bug. Unlike Gabriel, he now assumes she is Ladybug. He akumatizes Principal Damocles to go after So Clean. Mari Sue leaves without telling So Clean to stop being Ladybug because she can't do that without telling her that she's Ladybug. She can't talk to her without talking to her, and she can't unmask her without unmasking her. I don't know what in God's name all of that meant, and Tiki agrees with me. She tells her to go back. Dark Owl, uh, sorry, Darker Owl breaks in and takes So Clean's earrings. He announces that if Ladybug and Cat Noir won't bring the miraculouses, So Clean will fall into a can of paint. That was not a joke. Ladybug's lucky charm is an alarm clock, so they can wake up from their dream after getting hit by gift. Their dream is about defeating Darker Owl, defeating Monarch, and living happily ever after. They get married and have a bunch of AI-generated kids. Wow. Before the dream ends, they have a dramatic moment. Oh boo-hoo. The alarm clock got triggered, which has woken up the two stooges. How dare you play with our feelings! That's what you did to me in season 4. Now we're even. Cat Noir was about to cataclysm Darker Owl with all of his rage, but due to traumatic experience, not counting this, he refused. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh boo hoo, is little goblin junior gonna cry? I'm gonna turn that into a meme one day. After Ladybug told So Clean to stop with all of the baloney she has done, Marisu's mother gave her an Alexa ripoff as a gift. Marisu gives it back due to the riskiness of keeping it wherever she goes. And the episode ends. Jubilation is mediocre. The newest character introduced to the show, So Clean, she's boring, though she is better than Chloe's cousin. Everything is better than Chloe's cousin. Even the cardboard box that you threw out yesterday. The return of Dark Owl. As much as I adore how he looked, I wish they gave him a better name. I love Dark Owl, but Darker Owl? How how about Owl City? So many sights to see. The dream scene. Did you think I would be sad when the dream ended and they kissed for the sake of it? You'd have to be a fool to believe that. After everything they've been through before this episode, my general thoughts about the two stooges became absolutely bitter. They are immensely unlikable, which wasted this dramatic scene. This drama is wasted because they are both wasted with awful character writing, especially this chap. If this dream comes true one day, I will be so happy. Not because they'll be together, but because I'm finally gonna be done talking about the show. Until that fateful day, I'll keep discussing this stupid ass cartoon for you guys. I'm happy this dream scene has fans cheering and crying. I'm not one of them. The babies do look disturbing though. Question. How long were they dreaming? This is what the clock looked like before it got triggered. 10 o'clock. When it did get triggered, it looked like this. 16 o'clock. It took Darker Owl six hours to walk over there? If I recall correctly, I didn't see Ladybug set the alarm time. She summons the clock and gets to the dream. She didn't do anything with the clock. So... So what the hell happened? Faster, Darker Owl, faster! I'm giving Jubilation a 4 out of 10. Did I say mediocre? Sorry, I meant it's awesome. Illusion. <laughs> Once upon a time, random people talk about Ladybug, Monarch, the power of love, etc. What? They have induction stove? So, so not, not satisfying. satisfying. Marisu and Alia talk through their Alexa ripoff rings while walking to school. I miss not being able to be Rena Rouge to help you. I miss not being Rena Rouge to help you? You're not Rena Rouge anymore. Why do you miss what you have right now? I guess she's being sentimental like, Oh, I miss using this alcohol container. What I can't seem to understand is Mari Sue's reply. I miss not being Rena Rouge to help you. I miss our team of superheroes too. I miss our team of superheroes too? What? What? What?
But then we'd see the ball. I'd have noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Bustier announced that there will be no afternoon classes due to the parent-teacher conference, which is something Gabby will attend to. Good for him. Nino also announces something. He will start a resistance called The Resistance. I'm gonna change my address to address. The purpose of The Resistance is to help Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat Monarch. Yeah, they do need help with logical thinking. Nino's code name is Comrade Ketchup, while Adrian is Comrade Mayo. Then you should call yourself Comrade Chocolate. Mayo and Chocolate. Chocolate. Nino's plan is to purposefully akumatize someone to expose Monarch's new tactic. Alia and Adrian argued that might be cruel. Nino replied, You forget Ladybug always fixes everything in the end with her magic ladybugs. Yeah, but recently, Ladybug couldn't do it due to Monarch escaping with a lucky charm. This scene had no logic because these wankers have no brains. So Nino, take my advice. Help Ladybug and Cat Noir not in your way, but by teaching them how to use their brains properly. That is if you have one. EMOTIONAL DAMN The question is, how- Ugh, This animation is so disgusting, it makes me feel like I'm buried alive inside of my own grave. <laughs> Lila eavesdrop using the Alexa ripoff. As soon as the Adrian fanboys arrive at the cafeteria, why? How? The boys sneak out while Lila follows into this room. Who falls to pieces and loses their cool over nothing? A uh, teacher? Uh, no, come on! A parent! Wow. Nino describing parents as people who get mad over nothing. I think that should be an indication of Nino's backstory. He was not raised properly. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Nino goes after Gabriel. Stupid plan. Why choose your best friend's father when he finally began to change for his son? Target another parent that isn't related or have nothing to do with you or your friends. Like this random woman. Why go with parents in the first place? Why not someone easier to piss off? Like the person who, if I'm correct, has been akumatized the most. Chloe! Akumatize her! I see no reason not to choose Chloe. Three of the four stooges barge in to do this to Gabriel. After Alia hits him with a chocolate cake, I think it's chocolate, he looks like he got hit by pizza and spaghetti, but not a chocolate cake. Where are the black spots? Of course Nino's plan didn't work. If it did work, the balance of the universe will crumble and Jebediah Kerman will die. Again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again, tell me where you gonna take us. Thanks to that, Gabby goes home with Adrian. After announcing that he will never set foot in this grease trap again, he's going to transform. Hold him back. We need more cream, ketchup, mustard. Shut up, Nino. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Your best friend is leaving forever. Can't you see? Can't you see? Since you don't have a brain, at least have a heart, you chavtastic chav. Don't you know anything about anything, Nino? I hate this guy. I hate you. <laughs> You see, Alia, I'm a curse for Adrian. All this proves is that I'd better stay away from him. Shut the f*** up, Mari Sue. You want me to feel bad for you, is that it? Quit being a pick-me, Mary Sue, and snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gra- Obviously, you're not at fault here. This is Nino's fault. He's a curse to Adrian and the human race, and he needs to die. Nino tells Adrian to record his own father getting akumatized. We'll analyze while Ladybug and Cat Noir save your dad. Uh, I need to cut you out! I need to cut you out! Monarch goes to the sewers to sneak attack the two stooges. Ladybug uses cheese on the invisible monarchs. The collector rejected the Akuma, and he falls off after saying, You have freed me from evil. <laughs> after diving and finding out that Gabriel is fine, I bet Ladybug is thinking, God, what is wrong with that guy? Nino jumps to the conclusion that his plan worked. According to the video, the lightning strike was the one giving the Akuma victims Kwame powers. That's great, now go back to the depths of hell right now before I do it for you. Ladybug calls Nino out, rightfully so, for taking a huge risk. And sometimes in order to do good, anything goes. At least he said sometimes. Unlike what this guy said, making a bad guy suffer is never gonna turn them into a good guy. There are some times when making a bad guy suffer doesn't turn them into a good guy, but never? Are you kidding me? Never? Should have said sometimes. Gabby is now working with the resistance, receiving the code name Comrade Tartar Sauce. I can't believe I'm saying this, but... Gabriel has my pity. Gabby says sorry to Adrian and lets him go back to school. The Resistance got more members. Now this is embarrassing. Working for the Resistance is a lot more embarrassing than working to be Amber Turd's lawyer. My dog stepped on a bee. Speaking of Amber Turd, she's here as well. Everybody wants to help Ladybug, Marinette. Oh my god! Oh my god! After Marisu revealed herself to Alia in Gang of Secrets, there is no reason to not talk about the issues Marisu has with Lila. At that point, they should have shared everything together. Not literally everything, but a lot of things. A lot of important things. Since she did an extreme trust exercise. Aren't you curious about Marisu's immense hatred for Lila? You never talked about that. Tell me why. Tell me why. Wait, 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 dude. Of course you know why. They never talked about Lila because Lila 
is worth nothing. The episode ends there. What is wrong with Lila in this image? It looks like she just came. I'm not trying to be funny. It looks like she has reached the climax after jacking for hours. The epilogue shows Kagami's mother is working with Monarch. Yes, I said Monarch. She knows he is Monarch. They are working together as villains to take down Ladybug and Cat Noir. I may be wrong. They better explain this later. I swear, if this is again only for shock value, not for making sense, I'm gonna flip out! Flip out! Illusion sucks. I like the battle with the collector before they go to the sewers. And this little scene of Alia and Marisu talking while arriving at school at the same time, it's pretty cool. Things that I hate. Gabby's plan could have been better. That's something that should be said for all of his plans, especially his recent ones. Alia siding with Amber to this day is drivel. And Nina? Nino is the worst. Nino is just one of those characters that whenever I talk trash about him and reveal to the world that he is objectively a dumbass, I can't help but celebrate a little bit, like wiggle my finger. You know, maybe you would stand up and hit a little boogie with it. Oh, was that the SpongeBob? Oh, Nino is a dumbass? As for the rats in the sewers, I swear, they appeared out of the blue. Probably because the plot told them to for Ladybug to win. Another Mary Sue moment by Mari Sue. Good job, mate. I'm sure she said that out loud. Loud enough for them to hear. He should have known to charge and paralyze her right away before she does anything. Here's a better plan. Use sublimation to grant the power of flight. I don't think there are Kwamis that allows you to fly. Fly up, all the way up there. And once they come to the sewers, death from above. If you missed or got blocked, you could tell your clones to back you up. There are eight of you, goddammit. Or come up with a plan that's better than mine. <sighs> so many possibilities to get their miraculous is using them. Too bad Gabby has lost the plot. I'm giving Illusion a 2 out of 10. Why is Nino still alive? Undertale. Kagami tells Adrian to call Marisu. Adrian asks Marisu out on a date. He chose to meet her at the museum. That's the place where his feelings for Marisu officially changed. Yeah, exactly that moment. You think I'm joking? Somewhere around the time we went to the Grevin Museum? Why haven't we been more- Out of all the moments they had with each other, like the umbrella scene, the season 2 finale, the dance in the moonlight, the writers go with that? Based on what this episode is suggesting, the only thing driving his attraction to Marisu is this. This feels so out of character. Adrian is someone who gets uncomfortable around fanboys and fangirls. Why the hell is he making this an exception when it is the worst of all the uncomfortable fangirl moments he ever had? Tell me why! Tell me why! If you're gonna fall in love with someone who acted like a creepy fangirl, you might as well fall in love with this woman. I get that Adrian was not raised properly and he doesn't have a great knowledge with love, but any type of human being in the world, except psychopaths, do not find this 100% romantic. Oh, I'm falling in love with a psychopath who is willing to kiss a wax statue version of me. I wonder if she's done this before. For God's sake, is everyone here allergic to normal pills or what? Also, I thought you were starting to fall in love with Mari Sue after she gave you advice of standing up to your father, although you two were not yourselves at that time, but this episode claims that he loves her thanks to this moment. Is it this or this? Marisu talks to whoever this is, uh, Dimitri, about her confused and conflicted feelings for Adrian, and that she messed up recently because of her confused feelings. This guy said, what's past is past. She asked Dimitri to come with her to feel less scared. Together, we came together is what I mean. <laughs> We came together. Adrian and Marisu recalled the infamous wax statue kiss scene. When he remembered it, he felt sentimental. Look at his face. He liked it. Tell me why! Tell me why. But when she remembers it, understandably, she's embarrassed. If you do the same thing she did, how could you not feel embarrassed? You'd have to be a goddamn psycho to be proud of doing this. You'd have to be an even crazier psycho to enjoy it. Snap out of it, Adrian! Please? Adrian said he wasn't feeling awkward during that scene. He was surprised not by what she was doing, but by how he was feeling. Allow me to translate. Sisav me mele sub sub litle head tura krenis tur pukorant ekres tkilna. Speaking of gibberish, these two trapped Mari Sue and Adrian, hoping that they'd talk without Mari Sue running away or screwing things up, just in time for this woman to be akumatized. Kissing me while you thought I was a statue is not disastrous at all, believe me. If that is not what you consider disastrous, I want to know what is disastrous to you, Adrian. Manipula breaks in where Kagami and Johnny trap them. I'm now convinced that they are working with Monarch. Manipula can bring wax statues to life, along with all of their powers, by putting pamphlets on their foreheads. When she brought Rina to life, that thing can perform Mirage alongside Pigella with her gift, etc. She also brings the wax statue of Tornado to life. 
tornado. And if I'm correct, that thing has the same powers of the miraculous holder it represents. Time traveling! What? Well, well, uh, go back in time and finish what you were doing in evolution! Go back to the past and find Ladybug and Cat Noir while they were at their weakest. Don't worry about them. They can't go to the borough. They don't have the rabbit miraculous anymore. You can go to the borough. Using this wax statue. That is if this wax statue can do that. I assume it can. But the episode never tackled upon this wax statue. That thing did nothing in this episode. That's bull roar! It's bull roar! Milady. It's me. It's just an image, milady. You think? He's right there! That cat noir has a f pamphlet! Of course it's a fake, and you know it, ladybug. What the hell were you thinking? Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Don't tell me what I'm thinking right now is exactly correct. I'm here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God! As soon as Manipula grabs a hold of Ladybug, she takes a really, 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 really long time to snatch her earrings. Tell me why! Plot armor. After defeating Manipula, the mayor says open the museum to give people hope that these two stooges will get the Miraculouses back someday while not talking in the process! The episode ends with Adrian and Marisu jumping to conclusions that they are both in love. Adrian is in love with Marisu, and Marisu is in love with Cat Noir. The love square has officially flipped upside down. That's the purpose of this episode. That and to clarify that this wasn't a maniacal thing to do. They failed at both tasks. Number one, at the end of the day, this is still a maniacal thing to do. No matter how many times you want to justify this. No matter how much you want to twist your own words. Psychopaths find this romantic. End of story. Ugh, I feel like a hypocrite for calling people psychopaths while well, I'm a psychopath myself. Number two, the love square flip. Did it make any sense? We'll talk about it later. Kagami and... Timothy. These two are complete gits. The writers of Miraculous Ladybug, if this is your idea of great friends, you guys have the worst friends ever. And it gives me the motivation to be happy that I won't have any friends once I move to Australia. I'm giving determination a 3 out of 10. Australia. Passion. Once upon a time, Marisu explains to Alia why she is now in love with Cat Noir. Alia believes it's a coincidence that by the time Adrian began to have a thing for Marisu, Marisu now likes Cat Noir, blah blah blah. At the aggressed mansion, Adrian drew Marisu's face. Oh god, don't tell me that he's gonna end up like Marisu, sniffing her pillow, collecting pictures of her and all that stuff. <sighs> Adrian goes to the kitchen where his dad is cooking him pancakes. Natalie pretends to be nice until Adrian leaves the room. Nice. Overpowered by a cripple. Eh, granted, they're both cripples. Natalie tells him to give up and accept that Emily is dead and she's never coming back. But Gabby is all like, No! No! <laughs> It turns out that Gabby mustn't give up, now that he got cataclysmed by Cat Noir. He needs to get the jewels more than ever, to save themselves. Otherwise, Adrian will be left all alone. This is probably the most sensible motivation Gabriel has ever had. The evidence is as clear as day. They are both gonna die if they don't do something. Unlike his original motivation, I want the Miraculouses to revive my wife, I miss her so much, but everyone's got dead people, why can't you deal with it? Tell me why! Tell me why. This is a perfect example of a motivation that requires further elaboration. Not like this. However, I'm not saying this is a worthy enough motivation to catch my interest. Tell me something. How did this happen in the first place? How did Gabriel get cataclysmed? Ladybug was, for no reason that makes sense, unbelievably slow at grabbing things. It's a motivation with a piffle buildup. Good buildup is required for motivation flips. If there is no good buildup, your audience will be like, Oh, why didn't he just do this? Why didn't he do that? Why could couldn't she do this? Blah blah blah. So if you think I would care about this just because it's a life or death situation, you know the drill. Stop! Natalie watches the recordings Emily made. Natalie said she failed her and swears that she will get the Miraculouses before he does. I won't let him recreate a world in the image of his madness. <laughs> For some reason, the way she says madness makes me laugh. I won't let him recreate a world in the image of his madness, in the image of his madness, in the image of his madness. Adrian walks in and asks for love advice, but all he got was vague information about her past and the possibility that she might die the same way his mom died or got into a coma. That's sad and all, but here's the thing. I don't care. 
Gabby talks to his dead wife for the billionth time. Aren't you getting tired of this? And Natalie walks in, promising to fulfill her promise that she made a long time ago. And that is to get the Ladybug and Black Cat Miraculouses for Gabby. She's doing this for him after all? Is she lying deep inside? We just heard Natalie say this a while ago. Meanwhile, at school, Adrian bumps into Mari Sue, who teleported there. Seriously, she tele goddamn ported. Adrian is sad that someone close to him is very sick and that there's nothing he can do about it. Mari Sue replied with a life lesson, which made him love Mari Sue even more. That's why he loves Mari Sue? Nah. Don't lie to me, Adrian. You love her because she did this to you. Plague is worried that his holder is in love with her holder. Tiki reassures that everything's fine because the love square flipped upside down. Natalie gets akumatized and transforms into passion. I mean, Safari. Why not name yourself Karen the Hunter, named after Craven the Hunter? Her powers are never missing a shot. She receives the power of the Gold Miraculous to draw any weapon she desires, like a crossbow, a whip, and a tracker. She can use various Kwame powers as ammunition for a crossbow, such as Mirage, Gift, but she can't use six powers at once. You can't use more than six powers at once. I won't make the same mistake you did, Gabriel. EMOTIONAL damn it! Safari's design is cool. She looks like she belongs in a metal band. But what's with the skin color? What's the purpose of that? To hide her identity? To avoid being recognized as Natalie? Change it back to her default skin color. Either way, you'll get recognized as Natalie. Natalie? See what I mean? The two stooges lost time tagger. Ladybug says that they should go see a movie together. I swear to god, I'm gonna get to this later. Ladybug got paralyzed, Cat rescued her and got chased by the bullets, all the way down to the sewers. Eventually, his time ran out and D transformed, which stops the bullets from chasing him, since these things are chasing after Cat Noir, not Adrian. It's impressive how he managed to outrun bullets. Adrian outran bullets! Plague removes Marisu's earrings to unparalyze her. Now they're both at their civilian form, talking without looking at each other. Yet they can't seem to recognize each other's voice? Yeah, Marisu couldn't tell it's Adrian, because Adrian is saying, M'lady, right? That's how it works? M'lady? Adrian thinks they should make a wish right now, to fix the issues they have ASAP like Natalie's sickness. But Ladybug said that it simply mustn't happen, for there is a price for everything. Is there a price to pay when you use your creation powers? Use your creation powers to create a magical pill that can heal any illness, magical and not. I don't think there is a certain limit to your powers. The only limits are the ones you put on yourself. That means you have limits if you say so. Right? They decided to switch to avoid being detected by Safari. No matter who you are, there is always someone out there who loves you! <laughs> now that's voice acting. After defeating Safari, we get more professional voice acting. Forcing such a fragile person to carry out his twisted pl 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 in all seriousness, it sounds like the voice actor of Cat Noir is trying way too hard to sound dramatic. My advice is, dude, take it easy and keep it simple, alright? I'm no expert in voice acting, but I know good and bad voice acting when I hear one. That is not good voice acting. <laughs> That hug right there must be magical. It made Natalie's makeup disappear. The episode ends there. Passion is the best season 5 episode so far. Generally, it's boring because this episode is mostly about Natalie, a character that I never cared about. She had no character other than Duh, I'm devoted to this job. Duh, I like Gabby secretly. Duh, I care about Adrian. It's been four seasons, more than a hundred episodes. And in this season, Natalie is starting to become more than what she used to be. But it's too late. It's too late for me to keep on caring. As I said, my my patience has limits. My patience with her, Thanos snapped. That's why I didn't feel anything when it's hinted that Natalie might die the same way his mom died or got into a coma. She's worth nothing to me. Like Emily. Would it be too much of an exaggeration to say she is as forgettable as Lila and Marvin? Yeah. Still forgettable. Is there any way for me to care about Natalie again? No. Nothing more to say. I feel like I want to take a nap after watching this episode. It's so boring. And I don't know why it's called passion. I guess it refers to Natalie's passion of getting the magic jewels for Emily's sake. Who knows? Who cares? Passion gets a 4 out of 10. Bollocks. Reunion. Once upon a time, Mari, Sue, and Alia go to the museum where they find some answers regarding past Lady Noir love stories. A ladybug and a cat noir in love. It must have happened at some point, right? Why is this the priority? Tell me why. Tell me why! Tiki is no expert in love, so she says to talk to the past ladybug using the Quagatama. That's fun to say five times fast. It is used to talk to past miraculous holders. She needs to say reunion while touching the seal. Tornado leaves a message from the past to give her dad updates. He invites the class to witness true magic. Woo, photos from the past. Ooh, ooh. 
Tornado's brother is pissed that his sister's gone. Meanwhile, Marisu talks to a past ladybug. Selena Kyle? No one else can see her, only Marisu and Tiki. Selena is pissed that she was summoned all for giving some love advice. Yeah, you could have summoned her to ask for advice regarding the miraculouses, fighting, etc. No, she chose to ask her for love advice. Tornado's brother gets akumatized and transforms into the faro. This time, his powers are super quiz. Answer the questions with wrong answers and you'll be trapped in a book. Interesting. After defeating the faro, Tornado leaves a message. I had a nightmare. Can I sleep with you tonight, mommy? Selena talks about her love story. She didn't finish the story since this is not Selena, but rather a memory of her while she was still a holder. After that, they say goodbye. Plague vomits a Quagatama for Adrian, and the episode ends. Reunion is, while it is kinda interesting, I don't see any point of watching this. I'll explain why while I talk about the next episode. This episode gets a 4 out of 10. Quagatama, 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 <laughs> Elation. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time, Ladybug and Cat Noir did a fair day's work. Ladybug asks for a fair day's pay. She got rejected. Of course, Cat Noir got ambushed by stupidly obsessed fans. Luckily, he escaped right on time. Meanwhile, Marisu and Alia talk some bollocks. Adrian asks where Marisu is. Unfortunately, she's too busy talking about bollocks. As an apology for having the worst daughter ever, they gave him free food. He got ambushed by the fandom again and transforms into Cat Noir to escape. He stumbled upon Marisu. The two stooges talk some bollocks before going on a date. Why am I getting angry? Why do you think? You're getting angry, you stupid slag. The two stooges are off to find the ice cream man. Why are there so many birds? As soon as I saw that picture, while knowing that this is a Mary Cat episode, I instantly knew what I'm about to consume. It's just... I can't stand to experience the same thing again and again and again and again. Unless if it's something I like, like heavy metal. But this guy, he's not heavy metal. He's heavy and stupid. What the hell is going on there? She's not picking up. Do you think she's angry? I don't know. Do you think she's angry? After what you did to her? I WANNA STRANGLE YOU, ALIA! I WANNA STRANGLE YOU! The two stooges order ice cream, but they're not allowed. His ice creams are made only for loving sweethearts. Not for jokesters, not for friends, not for anyone else. The ice cream man believes that Cat Noir is supposed to be in love with Ladybug, and Mari Sue is- you get the point. They disagreed, causing them to be sad later. You're no longer in love with Ladybug. It was too much to bear. It just made me act in the worst ways. So Cat Noir is aware of what he did in the past after all. Recalling the past is a good way to keep the timeline consistent, and the characters consistent. Take a look at Barbie Dreamer's adventures. Trey is someone who doesn't know how to swim in season 2. Then in Go Team Robert season 1, which takes place after Dreamer's adventures, he can swim now. They kept this consistent within the timeline and his character by confirming that he wasn't good at swimming. And he said, What happened to the whole you don't know how to swim thing? Hello? They're called swim lessons. It kind of feels out of nowhere because it happened like that, but it still works because it's not a big deal. Trey's swimming ability is not a character arc, nor does it define his entire character. It's a small character trait, and it was established twice in the show, if I recall correctly. This is an example of decent, consistent writing, but this is a whole new world. Cat Noir may have perceived what he did in the past, but that's not enough. It's hard to explain, but I'll do my best. I'm happy that Cat Noir acknowledged his idiocy back in season 4. However, the acknowledgement itself feels out of nowhere, because it happened like that. And that's a bad thing. Cat Noir's selfishness and obsession over Ladybug was a big thing that happened in season 4. It wasn't a mere trait, it was an entire arc that ended not with a consequence that he deserves, but an amazing reward. And now suddenly, after nonsensically falling in love with Marisu, he feels sorry for all of that. This is consistent, but not in a logical way. Here's how I would fix it. Give him consequences, and make him learn that he was acting in the worst ways during his arc in season 4. Then in Strike Back, after Ladybug lost all of the Kwamis, I want to rewrite how she lost all of them, but that's another story. Cat Noir comforts her and says sorry for all the things that he's done and promises that he will fight by her side until they are all back. And then we get to season 5. Adrian moves on from Ladybug. Give him a pretext to be in love with Marisu. A much better pretext than this. Finally, we get to Adrian saying this in elation. That would be character development. That would be logically consistent. This, this is not character development. You don't just make your character go through a long phase and develop from it impetuously by acknowledging it in one scene from one episode, if that's how it's gonna go, then you can basically do that with anyone. Like Gabriel, during one random scene in a random episode, he will say, Oh man, I shouldn't do this anymore. 
due to the lack of consequences and general logic. This makes me want to doubt that he legitimately knows he was so stupid back then. Cat Noir, are you sure you're aware and you're sorry for your selfishness in season 4? Or are you reading off a script? It feels like Cat Noir is saying sorry for his actions not because he is sorry, but because he got caught and called out by the viewers. That's how this made me feel. It's a generic YouTuber apology video. It's manipulative. Manipulative and contrived. It's unacceptable. Anyways, after that bollocks, they started to make a baby. Ready to do th even th What about? Ready to do th even th What about? Ready to do even What about? Even what about? Even what about? Even what about? Noir stops all of this nonsense, and I mean nonsense, as he realized that it's wrong to take advantage of his fans by kissing them. Marisu broke down to tears, as she is tired of people deciding what's good for her. Why can't I love whoever I want to love? You can't. I can't. Not like this. I know what you're thinking. Is he gonna feel sad for me since I'm crying right now? Or is he gonna find a way to hate on me? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this disappointment, I kinda lost track myself. But considering that I'm in a bad mood after watching god-awful episodes, you gotta ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Marinette Su Pen Chang's emotional breakdown is a massive fucking disappointment. Tell me this, how did this thing happen? How did this thing begin? How did the love square flip upside down? Let's go back to where it all started. Undertale. First off, Adrian. I don't need to say anything. Second, Marisu. She is now in love with Cat Noir. Tell me why. Tell me why. I have no idea why she's like this now, but here are my own assumptions. Assumption number one. In multiplication, she already said that her stupid adoration for Adrian makes her turn into a deer in the headlights. Deer in the which caused her to lose precious things. She now vows to grow up and not pay attention to unimportant things, but the bigger picture. And that is planning on getting back the Miraculouses and protecting the people of Paris as she should. However, Alia insists that her passion for Adrian is valid and that she should stick with it. The entire reason why she lost to Shadow Moth. Was she even listening to her BFF? Does she even care about her BFF's emotions and the things that she's going through? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is it's all Alia's fault. She controlled Marisu's infatuation continuously. She kept on giving her a sign that says, Hey, you don't need to concentrate on the important things. All you need is Adrian, bro. Thanks to that, Marisu now craves for love. Mmm, love feels so good. Thanks, Alia, for opening my eyes. I have officially given in to temptation. Since loving Adrian is bad, and due to Alia operating her brain, she decided to go with Cat Noir. She doesn't see any consequence with that. But in truth, there are and she knows it. She said it herself that the safety of Paris is at stake. She mustn't afford any more mistakes and needs to focus on guardianship before anything else. Too bad her BFF is Alia. It's amazing how this happened and she hasn't learned anything from it. Does she need to experience it to learn it? Huh? My guess is Alia is staying positive to resist temptation of giving into Megakumas, like everyone else, as it was established in the same episode, Multiplication. Megaku, when have we seen Okay, but why the hell does she have to divert and be in charge of the affections of her BFF, aka Ladybug, the one who is supposed to stay focused? Don't you have any other friends to hang out with, like your stupid ass boyfriend, or Rose, or Julika, or Lila? EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! She's got work to do! Alia knows she is Ladybug. It's basic knowledge that it's wrong. It's wrong to disturb people from their important business, especially ruling over their POV. Yes, Marisu did call Alia to come over, to cheer her her up. But why would she do all of this? Why is she so f obsessed with Team Adrianette more than ever? She seems unaware of the fact that her defeat could have been caused by Adrianette, which should have been self-explanatory. How come in Gang of Secrets, when Marisu broke down and cried, Alia didn't talk about something else? She didn't change the subject, she didn't force her feelings or anything like that, but sympathized with her. She was a good friend there. Why isn't she a good friend now? Character development? Huh? Marisu's crisis here is so much bigger than there. It made Alia's character very inconsistent. To further support my argument, take a look at Animan. Cause I don't go and make decisions for other people. Oh. <laughs> That's 
funny. In the previous episode, Reunion, while these two are attempting to discover more about past Lady Noir love stories, Alia said maybe the superheroes just focused on the job and kept their lovey-dovey stuff out of their superhero lives like you should. And then in the next episode, she said if you love a superhero, you gotta know who's behind the mask. How else are you gonna live a legit love story? What? But, but you literally just said here, but... but what? <laughs> Alia, what do you want? What, what exactly do you want? Do you want money? Do you want confession? Do you want her to focus on guardianship? Or do you want her to be with Adrian? What do you want? What do you want? What's, what's, what's your end game? Hmm? What's your end game? I'm not sure if it's conceivable to achieve both at the same time. One of them needs to do a hiatus in order for one task to be fully pursued. Do you know that? Am I talking about Alia right now? Or a different character? Did I accidentally flick the channel? Is this a new cartoon? Am I on Disney Channel? Or Amazon Prime? What is going on? I think the world is spinning too fast. The world is spinning too fast. Let me ask you this. If Alia never distracted and manipulated Marisu's feelings, will Marisu still give in to temptation of love? Not being able to grow up after experiencing something like this is never not nonsensical. That's like if Spider-Man didn't learn anything from his uncle's death. If he was able to learn and grow from this, she can do the same. And they're both teenagers, okay? Adolescence is the stage of growing up. It would be so reasonable if she grew up from that. In Reunion, this backstory is they were fighting due to their monarchs manipulating them. Here, these two are loving each other after being controlled not by monarch, but by Alia. She's the monarch of this situation. How ironic. Is that ironic? Is it supposed to be ironic? She's controlling her not to fight and conquer, but to make her fall in love with a certain person. <sighs> Wow, this backstory is in contrast and paralleled at the same time with Marisu and Adrian's situation. Right? Right? If so, then it's bourgeois! As I said before, why is Alia like this? Tell me why! Tell me why. I asked you guys about this, and it turns out majority thinks the exact same thing I'm thinking. This is to convince the audience that the only way for Marisu and Adrian to be together is to give up the miraculouses. At the end of the unfinished backstory, Selena and Bruce renounced their miraculouses, and theoretically, they lived happily ever after. Is that the point of that backstory? Is that the point of that episode? Am I even supposed to care about it? What's the point of that episode? I still didn't get a crystal clear justification as to why Marisu's romantic feelings are suddenly flipped. Other and Alia, and Alia makes no sense. Assumption numero dos. In Jubilation, this dream caused by Darker Owl hypnotized them. It messed with their brains. What? No, 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 <laughs> no. Assumption numero tres. She began to fall in love with Cat Noir and move on from Adrian all by herself ever since Strike Back. I mean, look at her face. That's the start of it all. And that makes no sense. I assume that I'm wrong in all of my assumptions. And do I blame myself for that? Do I blame myself for failing to understand what the hell is going on after trying as hard as I can? You tell me. I've watched this episode and these episodes multiple times. I've replayed them for more than 11 times and this is where I have reached my limit. I can't take it anymore. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I can't handle this much lunacy. Bottom line, the love square flipping upside down is a great idea, but sadly, this cartoon is so good at doing what it does best. Garbage execution. The timing is also garbage. It would have been a Brazilian times better if this was done in season 4 or 3 or season 2 or season 1. Just not in this season specifically, where the current stakes are so goddamn big. It's hard for me to get invested in this when the bigger picture is distracting me. While the build-up to the bigger picture makes no sense, it makes lesser sense to worry about something else, something smaller and more incomprehensible. Having multiple stakes in your story can work if it's done right. All you need is to get get two things done right. Number one, both stakes have a purpose of happening, and number two, they're gonna contribute something to the story. It's true that this thing did contribute something, but my point is, I feel like the show wants me to cry or feel some sort of emotion from this. When all that happened is, I just kept on wondering what the hell is going on? Why is this a thing happening? Why is this important now? Can we please go back to Ladybug and Cat Noir making a plan on taking down Monarch? I got a monkey on my back and it wants to see the two stooges defeat Monarch once and for all. You're telling me that this is as big of a deal as that? I don't give a f bro. And I don't know why they give a f 
as well. We were finally, finally getting character development for Mari Sue. Something that doesn't happen often, if not at all, in this stupid ass TV show. But for whatever reason, the writers want her to go back to square numero uno. I guess they needed to find a way to give the love square a purpose again. After all, this is the heart and soul of Miraculous. But it feels like an obstacle. An obstacle that needs to get out of my way. A waste of a time chore to sit through. What is the current main obstacle? Defeating Monarch or being together? Which one is the obstacle and which one is the goal? Both at the same time? <sighs> and I guess they were attempting to avoid making her a Mary Sue by giving her flaws and consequences. That's cool. But the fact that her flaws don't make any sense makes her a Mary Sue. Mary Sue! Bad writing, bad TV show, bad album. Okay. Some of you might say, well, her reactions are dramatic. She is crying, and that's all that should matter, Cyrus. No! That's what we should expect at bare minimum! They don't get a gold medal for having solid reactions. That's where you start from. There needs to be a lot more. Don't get me wrong, people. Her reactions are dramatic. You're gonna produce a lot of tears when you're watching this scene. But some essential details are missing. Rationality and consistency. Here's an example of a decently written drama from a different TV show. Look at Bill from King of the Hill. The episode Pretty Pretty Dresses. It's all about Bill moping about his depression and his divorce. You wanna know why I was so immersed in his dramatic situation? While there are multiple circumstances in this episode, this is portrayed as the bigger circumstance, rightfully so. And his reason to be depressed is simple to understand, including how it was introduced and fleshed out. He's sad because he got divorced. Most people get depressed over this thing. The very first time his divorce was mentioned was in Luan's saga. Look at my friend Bill. He went through the worst divorce this county's ever seen, but you never see him crying. <laughs> Although we never see the divorce happen, it would be a lot better if we did. I was still immersed because they kept it simple, straightforward, and consistent. Consist! Tent. Consistent throughout the series. When he moved on from Lenore in Pretty Pretty Dresses, with the help of his best friend, I cried tears of joy. Masterclass writing. But this is garbage. Garbage buildup, way too many inconsistencies, gives me nothing but itchiness on my head. Huh, <sighs> I'm taking a break. Okay, so I am going to show you how to do some really cool rainbow makeup in honor of the rainbow outside my window. Mari Sue gets akumatized, but I'm not surprised she didn't. So who is Monarch gonna target instead? Love is not something you joke about. Love is also not something you can control, dumbass! I hate you! Do I hate this guy more than Alia? Nope. Speaking of Alia, she distracts the ice cream man. If Marinette wants to have ice cream in Cat Noir, that's her prerogative! Wow, character development. Woo! I'll come back for you, Alia. After defeating the ice cream man, hopefully for the last time, he says this. It's just that you make such a beautiful couple. But oh well, what matters most is that you're happy. Character development is one of my favorite writing choices of all time. When characters develop, my admiration for them soar higher than when I first saw them. It's like watching my kid grow up. It's so heartwarming. I love character development. But when character development is done like this... It makes me want to die! Someday I'll figure this love thing out? The real question should be, do you think someday I'll grow up? <sighs> Adrian hopes that Marisu will fall in love with Adrian again, same way Plague would love his cheese again, after leaving it alone for a long time to age. I think that's what he said. Anyway, the episode is over and I feel dead inside and out. So much nonsense, so much crocodile tears, so much fake drama. I felt like I was watching Amber Turd's testimony. My dog stepped on a bee. To conclude this episode, I'd like to quote my favorite Devil Wears Prada song. It seems as if what is most important isn't noticed when forgotten. Palacio deserves a 1 out of 10. Quit playing games with my heart. Quit playing games with my heart. Transmission. The Kwame's choice. Part 1. The episode begins with Marisu moping about the fact that she can't love anymore, otherwise she'll get akumatized and she's pathetic, blah blah blah. Alia was about to deliver Marisu's assignment. Alia denied and passed the duty to Adrian. Hmm. Who are you to decide for others whom they're allowed to love or not? You know what, Alia? 
I'm tired. Go ahead and return to square one all you want. I just want this to be over. I wanna go back to the master bedroom and watch Banshee. <laughs> Adrian visits Marisu. They talk about some bollocks. Marisu almost revealed herself. But all that happened here is Adrian being heartbroken after realizing she does not love him anymore. Yeah, whatever. Meanwhile at school, the Suicide Squad celebrate without knowing it's a failure. I can't believe how long it took them to tell each other how they feel. <laughs> Tiki and Plague talk some bollocks. She's between love and their mission is just awful. No, what's really awful is Alia. I can't get over how all of this is caused by Alia. And yet the show wants to suggest that this is all their fault. Partly it is their fault for not being able to grow up, but it's mostly Alia's fault. And Master Bait. Love is what gives them their strength. Love is what gives them their str- have you learned nothing, Tiki? According to Plague, the only way to fix this mess is to free Mari, Sue, and Adrian from them. We must free them of that impossible choice. Impossible choice? It will be possible after they defeat Monarch, and defeating Monarch is possible because growing up is possible and getting rid of Alia is possible. On a scale of 1 to 5, how would you rate your heartache? On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your purpose in the show? EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Tiki and Plague officially gave up on Marisu and Adrian. Okay, the two main heroes are giving up on being the title, Ladybug and Cat Noir. Not because someone's gonna die, not because their families are in danger or any serious threat like that, but because they want to be with their crushes. Oh no! <laughs> Gabby akumatizes his own son, but it failed, so he goes for another. Adrian visits Marisu and they talk about some bollocks. Tiki chose Alia to be the new holder, which is transparent. Your previous holder was a hypocrite. Why not find another hypocrite to be your new holder? I have to choose a new holder. Oh, 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 oh. Plague was about to choose Nino, but as soon as he saw him harassing Alia, he denied. Instead, he chose Misty. You might be thinking, Cyrus is gonna be so pissed and surprised when he sees that Misty replaced Queen Bee and Cat Noir. If you did think that, then sorry to burst your bubble, but I'm not surprised. How can I be surprised about something I don't care about? I was surprised, but after one second... Eh. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, Lady Slag and Cat Noir. You? You have no idea how much I don't care about anything happening right now. After that, the episode is done, and these two remained in civilian mode. Maybe this is what the backstory was foreshadowing after all. They are now living happily ever after, after giving up their miraculouses, like Selena and Bruce. The backstory does have a purpose. I don't know, bro. I haven't watched the second part. Let's see how long this will last. Let's see how this will end. Will it end with a bang or with a snap? Can't wait to find out. Sarcasm. The epilogue shows that these two had their rings on while they were were fighting the giant thingy. I'm assuming that this means in part 2, they will immediately give up their miraculouses since they've been exposed to Monarch and that the two stooges will go back to their jobs. I'll give my overall thoughts on transmission after I watch the continuation, which I haven't yet. This is where I stop. So those were the first 10 episodes of Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 in chronological order. The worst season so far. Evolution makes me want to rip out my belly button. Multiplication is Alia's worst episode. Destruction reminds me of Evolution but way better, that's not saying much. Jubilation is nothing interesting. Illusion makes me want to burn Nino to a crisp. Determination is bollocks. Passion is boring. Reunion is a waste of time. Is it a waste of time? Felicio plays with my heart and I hate it. And Transmission? To be continued. Ladybug and Cat Noir are dead from the neck up. Is it wise to leave all of the jewels behind when you have had them right in front of you? Why is it not an option to catch them all? Tell me why! Tell me why. Yes, I know Ladybug is not a creepy stalker anymore, but can that excuse her bollocks writing? No! I miss the old Adrian. Back when he was seriously sympathetic and kinda of funny, now he's an illogical plonker. But he's a Santa monster. Oh! Oh! Right! Sorry, I keep on forgetting that. <sighs> if that's even true. We're gonna have to keep on waiting to know the real truth, okay? Gabriel, I'm so glad that this costume didn't last long, but this costume sucks alongside his evil schemes. While it is kinda genius that he made rings to give his victims Kwame powers, why didn't he accomplish his mission in evolution? Tell me why! Tell me why! I know he got called out and faced consequences, but this is still nonsense. He's nonsense. However, Gabby's level of nonsense is nothing compared to Alia. Nothing she says makes any sense. Nothing she does makes any sense. She doesn't make any sense anymore. Alia is such a butthole. No, no, Beavis, listen closely. But hole. But 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The only way for her character to be forgiven by me is to delete her alongside Nino. The show is already pure balderdash. It doesn't need their help. Overall, season 5 so far has been nothing but bollocks. The situations they pull off are so nonsensical and pointless. I can't help but think that everything would have never happened and will all be fixed immediately and effortlessly if the characters would at least use their brains. But no, instead, we get bollocks. It's even more bollocks when you remember what she can do with her powers. What the hell were you crying about? All of your problems will be fixed like that with your infinite creation powers, dumbass. Get over yourself. <sighs> is there any way for this show to be saved? There is only one real way. Kill him. Delete everything and start from the beginning. I know the Rooster Miraculous is fixed now, and I know her powers can be fixed in the future, but everything else keeps on breaking bad. Based on experience from watching the show, the more it goes on, the more desperate for more episodes it becomes. It's not trying to make sense anymore. It only cares about giving the audience more episodes. It only cares about moving things forward. Miraculous Ladybug is overstaying its welcome. The modern episodes can be summarized as all style, style no, no substance. substance. Look at the first episode of season 5. If MLB has logic, at least one percent logic, it should have ended there. But of course it didn't because the the writers are like, oh, please keep watching Miraculous. We promise that there will be more episodes to come. More episodes, more love stories, more fun. Instead of ending this show in a sensible way, they decided to let the show live long. Long enough until it becomes fully trash. You know what they say. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. I think Miraculous will either get worse, or it'll stay as bad as it is, as it keeps on going. If they can make improvements, I'm sure that it'll be done in a deceitful manner. By this point, it is quite evident that the writing is manipulating its viewers. The best example of manipulative writing is this. You see, Alia? I'm a curse for Adrian. And not to mention the random things that pop out of nowhere for shock value and nothing else. Gabby's motivation flip? Out of nowhere. Cat Noir's accident? Out of nowhere. The love square flipping upside down? Uh, I forgot to mention my best assumption for this. The love square is prophetic. It's part of the magic of these specific miraculouses. When person A is chosen to be Ladybug and when person B is chosen to be Cat Noir, the magically romantic link between them will grow over time, the more they use it. Hence the purpose of this backstory. Hence they can't help but fall in love with each other, no matter how hard they try to resist. Love will always conquer when it comes to this specifically. If that will be true, then this is the most boring love story ever made. They will be together because they have shared love or they will be together because it was foretold by the magic of these things, or a bit of both. Let's see what they'll be doing with this now that it is f***ed up more than ever. Everything in this show was f***ed up more than ever. From the characters to the story, it is all shoved up this woman's ass. Granted, I expected season 5 to be garbage, but I'm surprised to see how worse it is than my own expectations. <sighs> But this is only the beginning. I must keep on watching until the end. Not because I think this show can get better over time, but because if I stop watching now, people will be like, Hey Cyrus, have you seen the new episodes? I guarantee you that you will take back all the bad things you've said about this show. I'll keep watching because of that, and also because of curiosity. Will it ever end, or will it get cancelled? I'm excited to know that. That being the case, we're gonna see how Miraculous Ladybug is gonna go further down to the nether regions. What are you doing? Standing in line for me while I run to the bathroom. What the hell, what? I didn't, I don't, I, 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 I didn't even have time to process. What the hell is going on? Are you gonna eat me or what? Guess the number between zero and nine. Five? That? What do you want? You want me to divide them or literally between the. I'll just guess. Six. Oh. Okay. Oh, sure. Wayne Manor. Okay. 
Welcome to Wayne Manor, young Maxwell. Thank you, Mr. Pennyworth. As I said before, Maxwell, call me Alfred. Okay, Mr. Pennyworth. <laughs> Literally just say, call him Alfred. Later on, there will be a gala fundraiser for Batman Incorporated. Anything you can do will sure smoothly. Well, however, there have been many strange occurrences of late in the manners. Investigate the first choice is yours. Happy to help, Alfred. You can only merely screw off. At the social event of the season, some uninvited guests are about to drop in. I'm ready to go to the gala thing, Alfred. Uh, splendid, Master Wayne awaits you in his drawing room. He asks you to speak to him first before you enter the party. Is that Thomas and Martha? Is it true about what happened to Thomas? No, he's a terrible man. Oh no, we shut up! You must be this Maxwell Alfred has told me about. Blah blah blah, I suspect. Well, I guess. First things first, you are a bit underdressed for this. Okay. Hmm. How about Superman costume? I don't like that, Brucey. Uh, splendid. You look very dashing. Thank you. I need you to mingle with my guests and see if you can just a uh, henchman. That guy right there? General of the Army? Hey, that is the kid, the boss, Mr. Wayne, I found the henchman. Quickly, Maxwell, I need a distraction. What, what did you say? Something, anything, a bat. Hmm. No, that's too much. Uh... Something friendly, just... I'll rob it. Bam! Oh, crap. Who's fighting me? Who's fighting me? Aha! <laughs> I just killed someone, Batsy! <laughs> They've discovered us. There seems little, no point in hiding right now. I'm on it. You can't beat Superman. Okay, maybe you can beat Superman because I'm running out of patience. Get him, Crimson Bolt. He needs a wrench. And there you go. Anyone else? It's not here, we need to buy some more time, more assassins. Alright, oh my god. Who the hell is doing that? Who the hell is doing that? The giant assassin? Oh great, oh great. Uh, rain cloud. Hurry up and get this off of me. I didn't get to fight at all. We're running out of time, make them bigger and stronger. Work it, make it, do it, makes us. Alright. Hey, come on, Crimson Bolt. I'm just gonna carry you. Oh boy! Uh. Come on, get him, Crimson Bolt! Get him, Crimson Bolt! Are you fighting or what? Uh, yes, he is fighting. Come on! Die already! Die! Oh my god, I'm dying! I'm dying! Oh god! Okay, stay back, stay back, stay back. <sighs> Wait, are you fighting Crimson Bolt? He told us the star rate would be blah blah blah. Hey, Crimson Bolt. Crimson Bolt, I thought you're a hero. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh man, that was close. Hey, Alfred. I mean, Mr. Pennyworth. Why would they expect to find a star right here? Perhaps they were looking for this one, sir? Where did you find this? While Rachel Gold and his associates searched the house, I noticed something sparkling in the well. 
I thought it best to keep it to myself for the time being. Yeah, good for you. Now give me the star right. Oh, I love this game. At the bottom of the sea, the Ocean Master strikes. Who's the Ocean Master again? I think it's Aquaman's brother. Did you feel that? That tremor can- SHUT UP! Mmm! Must be, let's put an end to this Maxwell. Shut up! I'm trying to play my favorite game of all time. Ocean Master, just as I thought. That's right, dear brother, but you're too late, I've succeeded, blah blah blah. Maxwell, I won't be able to withstand Orm's assault down here. Okay. Can't get close, uh, maybe you can use a tool. Okay, so I have to steal that thing. Mm, magnet? There we go. The pain is unbearable. Doppelganger, stop treading water and give my trident back. Let's see, what can I create? I got it. Hey, Maxwell, don't you be shellfish. Ah! Uh <laughs> Get back here! What an excellent steed you have created for you, doppelganger. Fit for a king, ocean master, I call him Crab Mongus. Great name. Okay, throw something a crab would like in the hole. Oh, I know. Uh, coin. Huh? Oh, come on, you love money. Mm. So what do crabs eat? <laughs> I've been watching way too many Spongebob. I totally forgot about what crabs really are all about. Um, just uh, bait. Yeah, whatever, throw it. Huh? Oh, what do they eat? What do they eat? Should I just research? No, no, this is not supposed to be cheated on. Fish bait? Like this? Can't be that difficult. Worm. Just a worm. There. There, there. Throw something in the. I said throw something. A crab would like. A crab would like, not a crab would like to eat. Hmm. A female crab? Mongus? Wait, what? Oh. Female crab. There. Hey? Oh, you wanna eat her? No, dude. You gotta mate with her. Okay. Doppelganger, this star right is lost to us. He's gonna be so mad when he finds out we lost yet another star right. I shall be sure you take the blame for this. Why do they keep teleporting like that? It's a big hole. Boom. Excellent work, Maxwell. You are truly a friend of the sea. Sure, whatever. Yeah. Your woman 
embrace Pour your love down on me like the rain Come on life when it goes into my veins I know it gradually heals my pain Oh, you're the only one that makes me bloom Tell me again I'm your shorty Stay with me after the party I need you cause ain't nobody Oh, ain't nobody else can make me bloom Stay with me after the party I need you cousin 